If you've ever had the need to take a headphone or line-level audio output and feed it into the microphone input of a computer or other recording device, then today's project will be perfect for you. Today in the workshop, we're going to be building a small audio adapter box that'll take a stereo line-level output and convert it to a proper level for a stereo microphone input. So stay tuned and welcome to the workshop. Hey, welcome to the workshop. Today I've got a bit of a different type of a project for you. It's different in the sense that it doesn't require a microcontroller, there's no programming or anything. It's actually a very simple passive electronic device that I needed to build in order to solve a problem that I had creating videos here in the workshop. Now, the problem I had started off when I bought this little HDMI capture device. This device lets me take the HDMI output from, let's say, a Raspberry Pi or my workshop computer and record it onto an MP4 file so I can use it as part of my videos. And the thing I liked about this particular one is that it has a microphone input that you can use to add a soundtrack to that capture. Now, I wanted to use that with the existing sound system that I have here in the workshop. I have a mixing console that I feed my microphone into. And I just wanted to take the output of the mixing console and feed it into the microphone input. And that's where I ran into a problem. Now, I tried doing this first with this cable. This is a very nice cable that has two RCA connections on one end, and it has a 3.5 millimeter plug on the other end. I took the two RCAs and plugged it into the output of my microphone mixer and the 3.5 millimeter plug I fed into the microphone input of the HDMI capture device. And then I made a test recording and the sound was absolutely horrible. It was distorted, it had all kinds of noise and popping sounds and things in it. And thinking about it, it's pretty obvious why that would happen. There's actually two reasons. The first reason is that the output from my microphone mixer is far too high for the input that the microphone input needs on the HDMI capture device. And even when I turned the output level down, it was still distorted and noisy. The second reason is that microphone inputs have a DC signal that they use to power the microphones that are normally connected to them. But of course I don't need that DC signal because I'm feeding the sound from the output of my mic mixer. So what I needed was a device that could both reduce the level and remove that DC signal. And I built one. It's this little box over here, and it simply has connections on each side. I used RCA connections because that's what works in my application. I have an input that I feed from the mic mixer and an output that I use with that same cable I just showed you that gets fed into the HDMI capture device. Now, you could use this for other applications as well. Let's say you had your iPhone, your Android phone, and you wanted to use it to feed into the microphone input of a computer or another recording device. My digital camera also uses stereo microphone inputs, for example. You could use this box to do that. And you could also build this any way you want. You don't need to put RCA connectors on it the way I did. You might prefer to have 3.5 millimeter connections, or maybe even build the whole thing into a cable without any connectors at all. But at any rate, since I couldn't find a commercially available device that did this, I thought I'd show you how I built this. And I, what I'm going to do is show you the schematic that I came up with and how I actually assembled this little box. So if this interests you, then stay tuned and I'll show you how to build one of these. Now when I was developing my line to microphone adapter, I needed a way of prototyping it. And I found that a solderless breadboard wasn't a very good solution because a solderless breadboard just picks up too much electrical noise to make it practical for prototyping an audio circuit. So I just spliced an RCA cable and sort of hung my components free form on the cable, which is pretty crude, but it actually did work. Now I certainly wouldn't recommend this as a permanent installation, but for developing the circuit and getting the component values fine-tuned, it worked very well. So having said that, let's take a look at the schematic. 
Now here you see I've got an input drawn as an RCA jack. Now of course you could be using a different input like a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack or just wired directly off of a cable. Now across the input I've tied a 15k resistor to ground. That's to provide a constant load for the line out on the device that I'm using. Now you could use any value from about 10k to 22k and it would work just fine. After that, I've got a 330 ohm resistor, and what this resistor does is it drops the level a little bit because microphones don't use as high a level as line levels, so I wanted to drop the level a little bit. Again, this isn't a critical value, anything from 220 to 470 ohms would work fine. Now after that, I've got a capacitor. I used a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor, but you could use a tantalum capacitor and any value from about 0.47 to 2.2 microfarads would work just fine. The purpose of the capacitor is to block the DC voltage that's applied to the microphone input on most devices. They apply that to power the microphone, but we want to prevent that voltage from going back to our line device. So that's why I have a capacitor there. And finally, I've got a 1.5K resistor from the output of the capacitor down to ground. Now this was very important and it was sort of the missing component. I found without this I would get a popping noise in my circuit. And what this does is it provides a constant impedance for the microphone input. And then that just goes to my output which is the input to my microphone. I began construction of the project by putting the components onto the small piece of perf board that I'm using as a circuit board. I constructed mine starting from the input and working my way out to the output. I used the four pin male header with the outer two pins as the left and right hot lead and the center two pins as the ground. I then connected the 15k and 330 ohm resistors to these, followed by the one microfarad capacitor. Afterwards, I connected the 1.5K resistor and the other 4-pin header that I'm using as an output connector. After wiring up the circuit board, I applied some dry transfer lettering to the cabinet that I'm using to label the input and output, and then installed the RCA jacks. Next, I connected the wires that I'd already installed the DuPont headers on to the RCA jacks. After that, I installed the circuit board onto the spacer that I mounted in the center of the cabinet. I connected up the wires and then installed the cover. Finally, I added the rubber feet and I was done. So I tested the box after I built it. I fed the output of my microphone mixer into the line in on the box and then I fed the microphone out connector on the box into the microphone input on my HDMI capture device and the result was very clean audio that I can now use to make more videos for everybody so the box was a success. Now if you need more instructions for building this I've got an accompanying article on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. You'll find the link to that article in the description below the video. So if you need the schematics and uh, a little bit more help in building a box like this, just check out the article. Now if you want to find out more about the videos that I make here on the DroneBot Workshop channel, please subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get informed every time I release a new video, whether I make it with the box or without the box. So until next time, take care of yourselves. Hope to see you soon here in the workshop. Goodbye for now.